Hey everyone, in this tutorial today, I'm going to run you through setting up WordPress on your local machine. Uh, now the benefits of running WordPress on your local machine is if you're making a WordPress website, uh, you can take advantage of the speed of running it locally. Uh, and then once you're completed, then you can upload it to a web server for people to view. Um, so to do this, what we need to do is install a program called Zamp. Now Zamp is a Windows based, but it also has other operating systems as well. Um, it's a Windows based web server. So it runs all the things that you need to be able to run WordPress and any kind of PHP related site or static website. Um, so it installs, it installs Apache, it installs PHP and it installs MySQL, which is the database uh, that WordPress runs from. So to do this, just go onto Google and look for ZAMP. It's a free download. Once you see ZAMP on the top, just click on it and then find the Windows uh, ZAMP for Windows and download it. Now it's uh, it's 124 megabyte file, so depending on the speed of your internet, it may take longer than me. But once it is downloaded, what you want to do is you want to run the installer. So, uh, and you don't really need to do any changes apart from um, if you want to change the folder location where ZAMP is installed. But other than that, you can just click next with everything. And that's about it. Click next and let it install. Okay, so ZAMP is now installed and just click on finish. And what that's going to do is run the, uh, run the program. And I'm just going to select English as my language. And as you can see here now, we have the control panel running. To make the web server run, you need to start Apache and you also need to start MySQL. Now, if you do get any sort of pop-up that asks you to uh, give access, just click yes. That didn't happen for me, but I know that sometimes it does happen when you run these two. And now that your web server is running, it should be accessible through local hosts. So if you go into your Google Chrome or your Internet Explorer, whichever browser you use, type in localhost and you should come to the ZAMP uh, page. So that means that the web server is running fine. So let's just test this out. Let's go to our C folder, go to our ZAMP folder and go to htdocs. This is the folder where all of your web files are stored, so all your websites. I'm just going to delete everything and then I'm going to go into my text editor, which is Sublime Text, and I'm going to create a new file. So we'll call, we'll call it a, we'll make it a PHP file. And we'll just do, we'll echo out hello. And we'll call that, we'll save it into our htdocs folder index.php so now if we go into our local host again and refresh it take away dashboard you'll notice hello is there okay and then let's just do uh, echo one plus two it should echo out three and by doing that you know that it php is working fine so that's so that's all working great okay so now we want to install wordpress Okay, so to in install WordPress, just go into Google Chrome, go to wordpress.org because WordPress have the .com, which is their own self-hosted WordPress, and then they have the actual software on wordpress.org. So just download WordPress. It's a zip file, and the latest version is 4.9.6. So once that's downloaded, what you can do is just drag the WordPress zip file into the htdocs folder. And then you just want to unzip it. So extract all and we'll call it a uh, test website. I'm sorry, guys, this is actually a clean computer. So I haven't got anything installed like WinZip or WinRAR or anything like that. So it all it's all pretty basic right here. Um, and I'm going to extract that to a new folder called test website. So as you can see, that's there now. So it's still extracting. Okay, so now the folder is extracted to a folder called test website and inside there there's WordPress. So we want to take out that WordPress folder, paste it into the main htdocs folder, delete test website, and then let's just rename the WordPress folder to something like uh, test. 
Okay. If we go into test, you'll notice that you have all the WordPress uh, files inside there. So if we go into our browser again, and we go to localhost forward slash test, you should come to the WordPress installation screen. So if we continue and go to let's go, it will require us to type in a database. So remember when we installed XAMPP the first time, there's MySQL. So what you just want to do is go to localhost, oops, localhost forward slash PHP my admin and you have PHP my admin there ready to go so just create a new database and we'll call the new database test but we can't because it already exists so I'm going to create a new one so we'll call it test website okay test website is now there if we go back to our WordPress installation and we just go database name test website the username is always going to be root with XAMPP MySQL and the password is nothing. And then you can change the table prefix if you want. Leave the database host as local host and click on submit. And as you can see, it's worked. So we'll just do run the installation and we'll call it my test website. We'll put uh, a username and just a, a password. Put your email there. And that doesn't really matter because you're not online. So you can just leave it unticked and then you install WordPress. So as you can see, WordPress is now installed and it's running off the local computer. So we can actually just go to the main screen and you'll see, you should see the, the base, the standard WordPress theme that comes up when you install it. So that's pretty much all you have to do to run a WordPress site uh, off your local machine on Windows 7 or Windows 10. Another little tip I'm going to show you how to do is actually make it so instead of it being localhost forward slash the folder, you can actually make it whatever you want. So my test website dot dev or dot development. So what you want to do firstly is you want to stop your server and then you want to go into your XAMPP folder again and you want to go to Apache uh, and then you want to go to conf and then you want to go to extra. And then there's a file here called httpd v hosts and we want to open that up so let's open that up in uh we i'm going to open it up in sublime text actually it's not working so i will open up sublime text first and then i will drag uh the v hosts into there and open it up okay so as you can see we have uh, a couple of, uh, a bit of code here. And what we want to do is we want to uncomment one of these and we want to make it so that it refers to that specific folder. So when we created the actual folder, it was in the HT docs folder, it's called test. So let's change this to HT docs forward slash test. And we will change this to my test website dot development. Uh, you don't really have to do anything else with any uh, with all the other options. Just make sure you uncomment these two things here. And we will save it now. And we'll then go back and restart our server. Actually, before we restart it, we also have to do one more thing. We have to go to our HT access, not our HT access, my, my bad, our uh, Windows System32 drivers etc our hosts file on our computer now what you want to do is you want to drag the host file onto your desktop and then you open it up in notepad or whichever text editor you want to open up in so i'm just going to open up in sublime text and i'm going to put the local host ip address which is 127.0.0.1 and then i'm going to put my test website development inside there as well so we need to put it in there so that when we type it in our browser, it knows to connect to our local host. And then the Apache file that we edited knows to refer to that specific folder. So now that's saved, drag hosts back into the etc folder. The reason why we do that is because sometimes Windows has permissions that don't allow you to edit the host file uh, inside the etc folder. Okay, so now let's restart the server. And then if we go to my test website dot development, it's going to give you an error like that if you're using Google Chrome. So you need to make sure you click this link up here and put the HTTP in front. 
Now, what you'll notice now is WordPress is acting a bit funny because it was installed as if it was the address was localhost. So we need to actually go into our localhost PHP my admin. And then we need to go to our database for the WordPress site and go into WP options. And we need to change both of these values to the new address. So HTTP my www. Uh, don't worry about my uh, www. You can if you want, but I'm just going to do without my test website dot development and forward slash at the end. And then also go to the second one and paste it in and do the same thing. Now, if we refresh it, the website should come up just right. It doesn't have local host in it. It's actually its own web address. So you can do that with as many websites as you want. You can create as many virtual hosts as you want. And then you just need to refer to them in your host file, restart your server, and you can run heaps of projects on XAMPP. Um, I mean, you can do it the other way if you want to, but it's just cleaner. Each, each website has its own domain name locally. So that's it. I hope that helped you, helps you. If you have any questions, just uh, pop me a message and I'll be happy to help you. Thank you.